Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the last episode of how to get started with modulars. In the previous episodes, we talked about how to pick your case, uh, which is the best uh, oscillator, what are modulations, and now we're going to talk about controlling your modules and recording them into... Oops into your DAW. For those who are here for the first time, my name is Francesco, I make minimal house music as the still noise, and on this channel I share my journey. Take a look at the videos, and if you're interested in the topic of the videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. So, when I speak about uh, controlling our modules, I mean sending them informations in order to make them play something. Um, and uh, an information, a control information can be sent through a computer. If you have a sequence brought down on Ableton, for example, we want to be able to send that uh, sequence to our modules and make them play or we want to use a sequencer and send the sequence to our modules so there are many ways or for example we want to use a MIDI keyboard and we want to send the MIDI notes to the modules uh, and make them play but as you probably already know if you watched my previous videos a module uh, work with control voltage so it needs control voltage to work not MIDI it it's not able to understand what MIDI is. So we need to convert our MIDI signal to a control voltage. That's the first point. There are mainly two ways of doing that. Um, the first one, which is not the way that I tried, but I know about it because I, I documented myself before starting with modulars, is using a MIDI to CV converter. So it's basically another module and an example, I have it on the screen here, it's the Moo MIDI by uh, Intelligel. So as you can see, there are two inputs, uh, USB input, uh, MIDI input, so you can both connect a USB directly out of your computer or a MIDI cable, if you have a, a MIDI keyboard, for example. On the, the other side, you see here all these uh, mini jack outputs which are basically the outputs for the control voltage information so you send the MIDI to the module and then the module convert them in control voltages that's because that's why it's called MIDI to CV converter um, the thing about this module is the, that it's it just does that and it's pretty expensive to do that so that's why I didn't consider buying it also because I have an Arturia Beatstep Pro and this is where the second way of controlling your modules come. Arturia Beatstep Pro is a sequencer, I have it here. This sequencer has a lot of CV outputs, so it's able to send out control voltage. This is one of the many sequencers that you can find on the market, probably there are other and there are other that have control voltages output. It has three sequencers. Two sequencers are made for sequencing musical things. So you have pitch information, uh, length of the notes. The third sequencer is for drums. So it means that it can just send out a gate signal or a trigger signal. So basically um, just the on off signal you can't send out a pitch information because as you may know modules for drums you control the pitch on them directly you uh, tune your modules you can't send a control voltage to control the pitch on the most common ones at least if you don't know what a gate is what trigger is what control voltage or voltage per octave pitch control is I suggest you go back to my previous episodes and take a look at them. Uh, now, if you see here on the back of the sequencer, let me see, you can see uh, many outputs. So these three are the outputs for the sequencer one. You can see pitch, velocity, and gate. So pitch is the information for the pitch of the note. Gate is the on-off information, while velocity is an information of how hard I press on the pad. So basically, I can use that information to control something on my modules. 
uh, for example, the, how much a filter is open. The harder I press, the more open will be the filter. That's just an example. Sequencer 2, same thing. And then for the drums, I have only these eight gate outputs. So I just send the on off signal out. Okay, it's not that expensive compared to the Moo MIDI from IntelliJ. I think we're pretty much at the same price point, uh, but this can do a lot more. So now let's talk about the three ways in which you can use BeatStep Pro. The first way is just as a, a standalone controller. So basically, I have it, I have here a cable coming out from a phone charger. Uh, and I use this to uh, power my uh, sequencer. You can also use a USB coming out from your computer. So now it's on. Um, and at this point, it's not connected to my computer, so I can use it as, an, as a standalone device. I set the tempo on this, I wrote my sequences down, and I control my modules, and I can then record them into my computer. This means that the brain of everything is my BitStep Pro. Now, what if I want to have this one, this, this machine, sync to uh, my Ableton project? Because let's suppose that I have my drums already done on Ableton and I just want to record my uh, bass line with a sequence that I wrote down on the BeatStep Pro. I want to record the bass line of my modules into my computer. So I need my BeatStep Pro to be synced to my Ableton. So in this way, I just need to set my BeatStep Pro to USB sync. So that means that when I press play on my computer, this machine will play as well. The BPM information will be sent from Ableton, so you can control the BPM from here. So this is the second way. You write down the sequence on the Beatster Pro, but you send the clock information from your computer. The third way is using this just as a MIDI to CV converter. So you don't want to use these sequencers. You just use this to receive MIDI information from computer. So uh, basically you have on your computer a MIDI clip with a MIDI sequence wrote down. You send that MIDI sequence to the BeatStep Pro and then your BeatStep Pro will send control voltage to your module. So to do that, you need to set Ableton in order to send information to the right MIDI channel of your BeatStep Pro, and then this will convert it and send control voltage to the modules. These are the main three ways of using it. Personally, I use the second way, so I wrote this, write the sequence on my BeatStep Pro, but I use Ableton as a MIDI clock, so it's synced to your computer. We will talk about syncing a little bit later, or better, in a minute, when we start talking about uh, recording your modular system to your computer. So the first question that I, I got a lot uh, is how do I connect my modules to my audio interface, for example? Well, that's what I do. I connect uh, my modules directly to my audio interface. I use this cable, which on one side is a mini jack mono, and it's the right dimension for all the inputs and output of my modular system. So this one little, the little one side goes, for example, on my plus output. The other side is a mono jack. And with this one, I go straight into my line input of my audio interface. Now, the thing about modules is that the signal is pretty hot, so it means it has a high gain. I never had a pro any problem in my audio interface because it has gain knobs, so you can attenuate the signal going inside the amplifier of your audio interface. But I had some problems when I tried to record modules inside my Digitact because Digitact didn't have the attenuation of your gain input, of your input level. So basically it, it kept clipping all the time. I couldn't record that. So to avoid that, you need a module that has a volume to control the output volume. I have, for example, this mixer by uh, Purtronics. This mixer has these faders that control the level 
uh, that goes out or you could um, use a VCA so a voltage control amplifier like this the pen to VCA which has actually a uh, uh, volume so you can uh, control the volume that goes out but personally I don't need them to do that because I have my audio interface and I can uh, attenuate the input level from the audio interface. Another thing that you need to know if you use Bitster Pro to control your modules when you want to record them into your computer you need this boy here so this is a this connector here comes with the, the, the Bitster Pro and basically it's made for dividing your power supply from your PC connection because you could both power and send MIDI information to the Bitster Pro uh, just with one cable coming from your computer but then if you connect the Bitster Pro to your module and record the modules back into your computer just with one cable you will hear a super annoying background noise which you don't hear if you connect power so on one side it's power on the other side is say PC so basically from the PC you go inside here from your phone charger you go inside here and then you go inside your uh, Bister Pro. Now before recording your modules if you use Ableton as a clock as master clock to control to send the clock signal to the Arturia Bister Pro you need to sync the Arturia Bister Pro to Ableton because by default if you connect it you will probably experience a lot of latency when you record your modules. If you want to sync Arturia Bister Pro to Ableton I made a video uh, on how to do that even if you have synced your Arturia Bista Pro to Ableton, uh, the first two measures of your recording will always be out of sync because it needs a couple of measures to sync up with Ableton where you press play on Ableton. Uh, you will always experience a little bit of latency. It will be never perfect. Also, uh, you will this latency will always oscillate a little bit. So what I suggest is set the latency right, record your modules and then go back to Ableton and if you need to just take the recording back or forward on the grid in order to make it sit perfectly on the grid. So now I want to show you the recording process of my modular system just a, of a simple baseline and I want to show you this latency problem and how I fix it because this, uh, this is a question that I've been asked uh, from the guys of the community. If you have any other question, ask in the comment. Let's get start with the recording. So as you can see now, I have my Arturia Bista Pro in USB sync. So as I press play on Ableton, you can see also the Bista Pro starts. When I press uh, play again, it goes in on pause. I want to send information from my sequencer one um, which I will use to write the sequence to my module plus. So I go out of my pitch output and on plus I go inside the voltage per octave uh, input and then with my gate output which is the on off information I go inside trigger. You can go inside trigger or sorry trigger or level. They are two different things. Trigger is just an impulse, so more for drum sounds or impulsive sounds. Level, it also have the duration of the pressing time information, uh, but I will use trigger for now. So let's try to record a sequence. I'm also recording the screen so I can show you the different passages that I am going through. So basically, I'll create an audio track. Here I set external in. Uh, I still need to set this to my audio interface, the script. And now the input that I use for the module, so I go out from my um, module and inside the input uh, 4, I think, let's see. Yeah, it's receiving this sequence now, so this sequence is going inside plots and now back into my computer, let's see if I can hear that. Yeah. Start 
start recording a module, you also need to tune it. And I write down a sequence, so I reset this. So let's create a pattern. This must be a C, but not that high, so. So now it says it's an F. So we need to Okay, we got it. Perfect. Okay, so now we tuned our module and we can write down a sequence. So let's first just write one note every beat. So Okay, so if you take a look at the waveform, you can see there's still a latency. Now, it's not always that much because in this case, I'm screen recording, so I'm pretty sure there are some problems uh, going on, but it's not always um, so, so much, but you, can, you could eventually see some latency like this or a little bit more, but you just need to adjust this and, and that's okay. So you see here, uh, where you have the transient of the next uh, note so you just cut here and you move this here and that's it uh, that's all you have to do so uh, if you see a little bit here like this you don't need to care about this it's just a little bit of latency on analog recordings is pretty common you can see there is an oscillation because here it's okay if I go back here, I see it's a little bit before, but that's completely normal when you record your module. So don't don't get mad about having this perfect align to the grid recording because you will never be able to achieve this. Now, once you've understood this, you can record any sequence that you want. So let's suppose I want to put this to um, a uh, minor scale, for example. So minor scale, so I will reset the sequence, start pressing some notes and casually changing them because they are quantized to an A minor, minor scale. So let's go back here. Okay, so th that's the track without and I add the sequencer now let's change the sound a little bit okay so let's let's try to record this and see where it sits completely unsynced because you can see there's this big latency uh, on the first beat but if I go just on the second measure it's going back to a decent delay amount because now it's very very a tiny tiny amount of delay so again I cut this part and I bring everything back so what I usually do if I recorded a choose measure sequence, I select, I consolidate now that it's okay, and I make this as a loop. So you don't need to record the whole thing real time, you just record the loop and then you loop it. Ah, I hope this wasn't too confusing. You need to start buying your modules and start trying out things. Don't overwatch videos about how to use them. You will never figure it completely out until you have them in your hand and you, you don't try things by yourself. If you need further help with, with this, contact me privately. I will try to help you as, best, as, as, as much as I can. And so guys, Oh, what a long video thanks for watching it um, thanks for your patience uh, let me know 
in the comment if you have any other questions. Guys, cheers.